nafs the sufi bhi part 2 it is said god has armed soldiers which he has placed in hearts and souls and others of his worlds and none knows their true nature and actual number except he he proceeds to explain that the limbs of the body the five senses the will instinct and the emotive and intellective powers are among those soldiers of these the two soldiers of anger and sexual passion can be guided by the heart completely or on the other hand disobeys and rebels against it completely until they enslave it therein lies the death of the heart and the termination of its inward journey of bliss and harmony heart has other soldiers as well know these as knowledge ill wisdom hikmat reflection and reflection heart seeks their help by right and for they are the part of god against the other two who belong negative tendencies or devil sufi brijmohan lal used to say human body is like a town and the intellect of the mature human being is like a king ruling that town all the forces of the external and internal senses that he can muster are like his soldiers and his aids the ego that enjoins evil nafs amara that is lust and anger is like an enemy that challenges him in his kingdom and is strives to kill his speed the body thus becomes like a grecian town or sea outpost and the soul like its custodian posted in it if he fights against his enemies and defeats them and compels them to do what he likes then he will be praised when he returns to god's presence sufi brijmohan lal says the thoughts that stir one's desire are two kinds praiseworthy and that is called inspiration or ilham and blameworthy and that is called whispering the heart is owned mutually by shaitan and an angel i call shaitan as the embodiment of negativities and angel as the embodiment of positive this is important otherwise we remain in something which is not easy to understand when we say angel we expect someone of an angelic nature sits there and devil so we divide them. but when we call the embodiment of negativities and embodiment of positive these we can understand and we can see in our day to day life there are moments when we are inclined towards the positive other times towards the negative these are dualistic beyond these there is no duality the angel symbolizes the positive attributes as bliss the bestowal of knowledge the unveiling of truth the promise of reward and the ordering of the good the shaitan stands for one whose business is to be against all this he propagates conspiracy against ilham and he is against angel success 
and tawfiq against disappointment holy prophet says there are two impulses in the soul one comes from the angel which calls towards the good and confirms truth whoever finds this let him know it is from god and praise him another impulse comes from the enemy who leads to doubt and denies truth and forbids good whosoever finds this let him seek refuge in god from the accursed devil then he recited the verse the devil shows you fear of poverty and enjoins evil upon you two thoughts roam over the soul one is from god and the other comes from the enemy god shows mercy on an aspirant who settles at the thought that comes from him he embraces the thought that comes from god he fights against the one that comes from his enemy to illustrate the heart's mutual attraction between these two powers the holy prophet said the heart of a believer lies between two fingers of the merciful the heart stands for upheaval and hesitation in the heart If man follows the dictates of anger and appetite the dominion of shaitan appears in him this happens through idle passion and in the process his heart becomes the hunting ground the negativities negativities feeds on idle human passion if aspirant does battle with his passions and does not let them dominate his nafs and thus contemplates the attributes of the angels at that time his heart becomes the sanctuary of the angels and they alight upon it holy prophet continues there is none among you in whom there is not a devil he says even in you o messenger of god he said even in me but god help me to overcome him and he has submitted to me so he does not order anything except good the mutual repelling of the soldiers of angel and the devil is constant in battle over the heart and this continues until the heart is conquered by one of the two sides which sets up its nation and settles there and most hearts have been seized by the soldiers of the negativities who fill them with the whispers that call one to love this passing world and disregard the next the aspirant has to fight against his ego with the four sorts of training eat little sleep little speak little and be patient when people harm only then the ego will walk the path of obedience like a fleeing horseman in the field of battle there are two types of murid one that seeks god's grace by worshiping him fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions then turning to perform as many voluntary good works as they can seeking through them salvation from the fire and the attainment of the rewards he has prepared for his workers others approach god in worship they fulfill his commands and avoid his prohibitions they turn to examine their inner self and they find in their hearts many diseases such as love of gold 
lust for power, honor and greatness, greed and furnace of desires, the chatter of vain passion, ambition, envy, love of praise and compliments. All of these worldly bonds are binding for the heart. Such a heart can never find the way to go. With these stains and because of his attraction for the world, he moves away from his Lord. He is in love with something God has removed far from himself and despised. To ask for greatness is to compare oneself with God the Most High. In the furnace of desires, one faces the greatest seduction, and in the chatter of vain passions lies tyranny itself and aversion to the rights of God. Such a heart is veiled from wisdom and from the understanding of how God disposes his affairs. He remains unaware of the truth. Such a person is a prisoner of his ego or asir nafs. He performs obligations while remaining in the world and thus avoids prohibitions which attach to the world. He generally worships God at his own convenience. This is an aspirant who must try to undertake every matter, action, and every moment by working on his ego sincerely. For whosoever seeks God must take pains and ask for sincerity in the secrets of his heart until the door is open for him. Or at the most he become aware that the door is always open. At that time the cost of his journey will be repaid in full, he will be strengthened and continue on his way and the further he moves, the more his gifts is increased for him in the form of bliss, harmony and oneness. He continues even further. This does not stop until he reaches God through his heart. At that time God appoints him according to his degree and he becomes a friend of God or one year love. He has made his heart stand still in the presence of God, wherefore he received his appointment. From that point he proceeds to works with a heart that overflows divine energy and is rich with God's will. This he does with a faultless ego free from sins and devils. He has parted ways with vain passion and the pursuits of and he has purified himself. Allah said, those who have striven for our sake, we guide them to our ways. He has thereby made guidance dependent on jihad. Therefore, the most perfect of people are those who strive for their utmost for his sake and the most obligatory of jihad are the jihad against ego or jihad al-nafs, desires or jihad al-hawa, devil or jihad al-shaitan and the lower world or jihad al dunya Whosoever works against these four, Allah will guide them to the ways of his good pleasure, which leads to his paradise. And whoever leaves jihad, then he leaves guidance in proportion to his leaving jihad.